We'll start our uh, meeting with a roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Here. Commissioner Barwick. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Stecklin. Here. Mayor Absher. Here. Would you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> Okay, item number three on the agenda is our item, our area for public comments, audience to visitors. So this is the opportunity for anybody who'd like to address the council to do so by coming up to the podium. This is subject to regulation by Ordinance 3128, amended by 3134, which is available on the counter up here by the flower arrangement. Is there anybody who'd like to address the council tonight? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to our consent agenda. We have items A, B, and C with sub-items. Uh, before we make a motion on that, do any of the commissioners want any item A, B, or C removed from the consent agenda and voted upon separately? Anybody from the attending audience want any of these items voted upon separately, A, B, or C? Okay, hearing no objection, would entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented. I'd make a motion we would pass the consent agenda A through C as given. I'll second that motion. Okay, any discussion on any of these items? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. <coughs> Yay. Under new business, item number five, police department. Commissioner Barwick. Yes, I'd like for the chief. Step up here. Um, I received a memo uh, from the chief. It actually came from one of our sergeants, Sergeant Thompson. And I'm going to read this real quick. Uh, on July 10th, 2021, Patrolman Strong was dispatched to the Ride Mass Transit bus station to check the welfare of two senior citizens with apparent medical issues. Upon meeting with these individuals, Patrolman Strong... Where was that here? <laughs> Might want to hold on until he fixes it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you guys hear the commissioner out there? Is it, maybe it's just me. Just Not through the sure. mics, though. Okay. My apologies. Maybe you should start again. Yeah. This is from Sergeant Jesse Thompson to the chief. On July 10th, 2021, Patrolman Strong was dispatched to the Ride Mass Transit bus station to check the welfare of two senior citizens with apparent medical issues. Upon meeting with these individuals, Patrolman Strong learned that these persons were traveling on a Greyhound bus three days prior when the connecting bus was canceled, leaving them stranded at the bus station. Patrolman Strong obtained a voucher for these persons to stay at the Gray Plaza Motel until the next bus arrives on June 11th. Upon arrival to the motel, Patrolman Strong learned that the only available rooms were on the second floor of the motel, with the only means of access being stairs. The two senior citizens attempted to reach the second floor, but due to their poor physical conditions, they were unable to ascend to the second floor. Patrolman Strong contacted all local motels and hotels to find out that, to find one that would accept the room voucher with no success. Patrol, Patrolman Strong transported these persons to the America's Best Value Inn, paid $64.35 for a room out of his own pocket, and made arrangements for them to be transported back to the Ride Mass Transit Station to get catch the Greyhound bus on July 11th. With thing, the way things were going on in our society now, uh, I think whenever our officers do something, he, he had no responsibility that he had to uh, provide a room for these individuals, but he decided to do that, and I just wanted to recognize him for that, and I think the chief Officer Strong, if you come up here, please. So, if anyone is unfamiliar with what a challenge coin is, this began in the military. It's an oversized coin with um, your department or your unit on it, and then if there's something special uh, that signifies your unit or where you're from, is on the back side of this. And these are usually given out when someone goes above and beyond or does something extraordinary. And in something like this, when we help the citizens of this area or even people that are visiting us, which is just as important, 
that is something that needs to be recognized. So this is a Marion Police Department challenge going. Cody, thank you. We appreciate what you did. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Cody. <laughs> the next item will be a recognition of the Marion Police Department K-9 units for their performance at the K-9 Olympics. Chief? If uh, you will indulge me, there's something I need to read to explain why I brought my dogs here and what this is about. Every year there's an event in, uh, let's see, what's the name of the town? Denver, Indiana, at the Von Lick Kennels. And it is referred to across the country as the K-9 Olympics. And three of our canines were sent to that Olympics this year. And I'll read uh, a little bit about this. Uh, there were departments represented from all across the entire country, as well as canines from the Department of Defense and teams from Brazil and Bermuda. The uh, Canine Olympics consist of multiple training venues that test a canine team's ability in drug detection and patrol work. Some of the drug detection venues include warehouse detection, vehicle exteriors, vehicle interiors, residence detection, and luggage detection. The patrol venue consists of events like obedience, control, tracking, and area searches for people. Uh, the canine teams are scored individually for these events, but are also scored as a three-man team. Marion Police Department's canine team placed sixth in the patrol in the patrol aspects of this, and 11th in narcotics out of all these different countries and departments. Uh, individually, Officer Steve Sloan and K-9 Karma placed third in the fastest dog competition out of 109 dogs, and Sergeant Ogden and K-9 Zara placed third, and Officer Tyson Baker and Meta placed eighth in control out of the 109 dogs. Zara was ranked 12th overall in the patrol aspect of the competition. Meta was ranked 20th, and Carmel was ranked 43rd out of 105 dogs. Officer Sloan and K-9 Carmel placed 10th, and Sergeant Ogden and K-9 Zara placed 12th in the narcotics open area search out of 79 teams. Officer Baker and K-9 Meta placed 10th in narcotics luggage detection out of those 79 teams. In the narcotics vehicle interior event, Officer Baker and K-9 Meta placed fifth. Sergeant Ogden, K-9 Zara placed sixth out of 79 teams. These are just a few examples of what they went through and just how excellent your K-9 units are. So if you can bear the noise, I'd like to introduce our K-9 units to you. First is, huh? Uh, first, kind of the, has been the supervisor of this unit for several years now is Sergeant Justin Francis and Loki. <laughs> Do not get close to this one. Hello, puppy. Also is Sergeant Dan Ogden and K-9 Zara. Officer Steve Sloan and K-9 Karma. <laughs> Officer Baker was unable to attend with K-9 Meta. So, <laughs> gentlemen and ladies, we're very proud of the performance that you put in and you've made not only the Marion Police Department but the City of Marion proud of the work you did. I have challenge coins for, the, for you as well. What do the dogs get? <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> treats? <laughs> I think I'll let you give them the treat. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Steve. So 
why is that one so high strung? <laughs> I don't know who's walking who. <laughs> I think they were looking at you weird, the dogs. I don't know what's that about. They sniffed us. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we'd approve the purchase of an undercover vehicle from Vogler Ford in the amount of $20,300. This will be paid with seized drug funds, and we also have two trade-in vehicles that have been seized. I'll second. Okay, any questions on this item? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item D. <clears throat> Make a motion that we would approve the recommendation of Chief, Chief Fitz and Commissioner Barwick, myself, to, to promote Sergeant Justin Dwyer to the rank of lieutenant at $80,000 per year plus uniform allowance, exempt position, and would be effective August 24th, 2021. Second that. You want us to vote first or you want to? I will not jump the gun tonight, sir. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead. Any questions on this? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Chief. Lieutenant Dwyer, please step up. The the lieutenant position is one that was in the Marion Police Department in the past, and it, I don't know why, it went away, but there is a definite need for it, and we held interviews, and Sergeant Dwyer was the selection. I think he will make this department proud, this city proud, and help me out tremendously. Normally, as you all know, when we get to a promotion part, I pin a new badge on somebody. Well. Unfortunately, his new badge has not came in yet, so I'm not going to get to stick him in the chest like I do everybody else. Maybe another time. Anyway, <laughs> well earned. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, look, look at the camera. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I appreciate it. You know, I'll start by commending our K-9 unit and Officer Strong. They've done an awesome job. Those K-9 units, the handlers, the girls have made us all look really good over the years. And I uh, appreciate the confidence and look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item E. I'd make a motion that we would approve the recommendation of the Merit Board to promote Officer William Huddleston to the rank of Sergeant, effective September 4th, 2021, to fill the vacancy left by the promotion of Justin Dwyer to Lieutenant. Second that. Any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Chief. I do have a. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so wish I could stick you in the chest. There. Well, Sergeant Hellison, congratulations. You, You've earned it. Smile. <laughs> Good enough. I'd like to say something. I appreciate the opportunity to served the city for the past 17 years. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to item 6A, and uh, that'll be my motion to approve the recommendation of the Hub General Manager to hire Joshua Haynes as full-time sports and fitness coordinator, exempt status at an annual salary of $40,000 plus benefits. Yes, so we're um, pleased to 
pleased to have a great candidate in Josh Haynes. Hang on, Chris. Um, we need to second the motion if there I'll is second a second. That. All right, Chris. Okay, so thank you very much, Mayor. Um, pleased to have a great candidate in Josh Haynes. Um, don't believe he's here this evening, um, but um, we had 14 uh, applicants, um, interviewed six, a uh, couple from other locations, uh, did Zoom interviews on a couple and in-person interviews as well, and um, got a great candidate going forward for that for that position of sports and, and fitness coordinator uh, that was vacated when uh, Chelsea left that position. So um, we he starts on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 7A, Doug. Thanks, yeah, um, we are in need of a part time employee to work, uh, do some small items, filing, uh, answering phone, email, or uh, answering opening mail, uh, that type thing. Um, so I would like approval or make a recommendation to uh, hire a part time employee in the treasurer's office working less than 20 hours a week at the rate of $12 an hour. That'd be my motion. I would second that. Okay, any questions of Doug on this motion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Um, item 8A under public affairs is a resolution that has particular interest to me personally and um, for the Watermark Auto Group Foundation I'm taking an extra I hope you give me a little bit of, of uh, leeway here it makes me nervous in my public role because of this company name that appears in this and I, so I want to be very explicit as to what this is and why you're being asked to support this resolution so first of all the Watermark Auto Group Foundation is a not-for-profit charitable arm, if you will, or offspring of my business, the Watermark Auto Group. So it exists solely for its philanthropic efforts. About a year ago, last November, the foundation purchased the Citadel building right here on the square at 504 Tower Square with the intention of turning it into a small business incubator. And I'll explain a little bit about what that means. Now, before anybody gets too upset, I want you to understand that there's every hope and prayer that Rob and the vault will certainly stay there. That was part of my attraction to that building to begin with. So we're not talking about displacing Rob. But for plus or minus 50 years, the other 16,000 square feet in that building have been inaccessible, underutilized, if not completely unused. So for some of you would know this as Hotel State. Some of you will know it as the Marion State and Savings Bank, which is what it was founded as in 1914. That's a 107-year-old building that um, is very well built and I think will still be there in 107 years. But it's, if something doesn't happen, it's going to be still empty on the second through fifth floor. So the second floor, some of you I think may have been there, but the previous owner had done a great job already renovating it and we're already starting to move some tenants, if you will, in there. And so with that, let me describe a little bit about what's going on there and why this is even in front of you. So inside of, so the foundation owns it, but what's there is what we're calling ETHOS, E-T-H-O-S, which stands is an acronym for Entrepreneurial and Technical Opportunities. So the goal here, when I say business inc incubator, and there's several different flavors of business incubators, and, and some call them accelerators, some call them incubators. Um, and there's differences between the two. But let me just describe to you in layman's terms of what our vision, despite what you call it, what we hope actually happens there. And this is of great interest to the city and is of no cost to the city. So I want to be clear about that, which is the main reason I'm taking this time. What we hope to happen there is to provide co-sharing workspaces for people that maybe aren't quite ready to invest in an office building or rent office space. They're just not to that point yet in their business idea. Um, 
and or there will be there's also some space and if we can get it renovated on the fourth or fifth floor that could actually be some light industrial space where things could be manufactured but what's important about this concept is that it's not just enough to find space and say okay here's low cost or very low cost or no cost rent for you for your fledgling business but it has to do with coaching and so I go back to when I started a company um, almost 20 years ago a software company the things that I had a great idea in my case I worked out of my house uh, what I was lacking was support from an accountant support from an attorney support from marketing people I was trying to do all that stuff on my own and I have found over the years and after talking to many entrepreneurs they're very much in that same boat so in terms of what an incubator is or what at least what we envision that incubator being is being able to also bring in either in office space or just every so often every couple of times a week partners that are bankers CPAs marketing people and attorneys that can advise these people at no cost whatsoever as part of that entire project so to me that's what an incubator is is providing that that support system more so than it is providing the space so in a nutshell in layman's terms that's what this is now the foundation's already made quite an investment in that building and will continue to make an investment in that building however as you can imagine finishing out 20,000 plus square feet of a 107 year old building is a very 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 expensive project uh, we anticipate paid it to be between four and five million dollar project so um, there fortunately and unfortunately for our area because of how coal jobs have disappeared and ravaged our economy there's a special grant program out there through the um, Department of Commerce specifically for economic development administration that can provide funding to our communities for business incubators that'll help displaced workers in those communities uh, hopefully get retrained in new jobs and so part of this process in in funding with EDA is to solicit support from other organizations to make sure that you know from the federal standpoint that we're not competing against them the best thing that might come to your mind is are we competing against the SIU business incubator and we're not as a matter of fact we've got a letter of support from them on how we're going to work together but part of the routine of this whether this was in Marion Carterville or Carbondale EDA would be asking for the city for a letter of support which comes in the form of this resolution tonight so again because of my personal involvement with the foundation which is not my businesses it just so happens to be named after my businesses because frankly the foundation is funded by the business but for charitable purposes I want to be very explicit what this is it's basically just a letter of support if you will that says we've it is to our best interest to have this business or this building renovated and for this kind of activity to go on inside of it but uh, to be very transparent I want to make everybody sure certainly on the council which I think they already are but everybody in the public to please understand this has no money involved from the city transferring to that building or the foundation or anything like that it's just simply saying yes this would be uh, welcomed and it's needed here in the community so again for transparency sake um, it would be my motion for the council to pass this following resolution and I will read it out loud again for the purpose of transparency whereas the watermark auto group foundation is applying for the United States Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration for federal funding and whereas the funding will be used for the renovation of the Citadel building located at 504 Tower Square Plaza Maine, Illinois, and whereas the renovated Citadel building will house the ethos parentheses entrepreneurial and technical opportunities close parentheses Marion business incubator now therefore be it resolved as follows one that the city of Marion supports the renovation of the Citadel building as planned by the watermark auto group foundation two that the city of Marion asserts that the renovation of the Citadel building will support economic growth in a rural area three that the city of Marion contends that the renovation of the Citadel building will lead to creation of high wage jobs and four that the city of Maine submits that the renovation of the Citadel building to be used as a business incubator and co-working space 
will accelerate the starting and expansions of businesses. So that's the resolution and my motion to pass it. I'll second that motion. You guys have any questions on this? Time frame? Uh, well, it would be helpful if we got the grant first um, before we started. So I don't know. I, honestly, I'm hoping it would take three, six months maybe before we hear something. It's hard to know, you know, how the grant process works. And there's no guarantee that we'll even get it whatsoever. So um, if we don't get it, um, the time frame is about 10 to 12 years. It'll, it'll take us to, to do what needs to be done. So this, this would be done inside of a year if we're able to get the grant. So anyway, and just in case anybody's interested, if anybody wants to know why, why the Watermark Foundation, why me, and why this building on the square. Um, first of all, I love that building. I think it's worthy of renovating. If you've never been in it uh, and want to, let me know and we can walk through it. But it's quite a hike because the elevator does not currently work. But it is very solidly built and I think it'll be here. The way I'm thinking of it is, is it was here before my grandfather was born and it'll be here after my grandkids are dead if we do this right. But what really inspired me on this project is this is something that's so, the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship part of it and in, in enabling that in our community, not only is that a huge um, need and obviously fits in well to my job and all of our jobs really of spring on economic development, but it's something that's relatively close that I could sort of watch and enjoy while it's here. What, got, what actually made me pull the trigger on it, so to speak, is, um, one of my first public speaking engagements as mayor was in May of 2019, just a month or so after we were seated in office. And I'm ashamed to say that I didn't know at that time the story behind Goddard Chapel, which is a very historic gem, G-E-M, in our city, just like I feel like the Citadel is. I'd known what the name was of that building didn't understand the background of it, and only later did I find that that was a gift from former Mayor Leroy Goddard to the city after he had gone on from being mayor and moved to Chicago and became a very famous, um, or not famous, but a very successful banker. And uh, for those of you that have heard me tell some of my story in the past and what my how what my demeanor towards things is. I don't like that concept. I give him all that credit, but I like the concept of living things real time, not waiting until later and doing something after you can't. Kind of like giving something to your kids after you're dead. I'd rather give it to them now. And I hope they're not listening. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. So I kind of got inspired by that, thinking, well, this is something that not only is needed in the town if it works out right. You know, for 50 years that building has sat deteriorating. And it's such a shame because it's such a grand building. And uh, got inspired by Codify in Cape Girardeau, which restored an old building in their downtown and does similar, teaches people to program computers, which is not necessarily, that's part of what we're going to do, part of the program. We're actually going to start that real soon. But that's pretty much all they do in addition to co-working space. And I thought, what a neat confluence of things to be able to try to do uh, and not wait until it's something that I have to do until I'm not mayor anymore. And with any luck and God's grace, this will be a gift that the foundation can leave behind for the city for years to come, just like Mayor Goddard did. So anyway, that was that story. Appreciate your, your support. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Okay, Commissioner Reports. Uh, let's see, I don't remember who we started with last time. We'll start with Doug. Doug, you have anything tonight? No, I don't, sir. Mr. Barbick? Well, I want to report on the softball game that we announced last meeting, uh, the police department versus the fire department. And uh, the fire department uh, prevailed. The score was 21 to 10. Uh, the police department, um, it was funny, you know, it was all in, in good fun. The, uh, the police department had a sign 
uh, and it read, shh, the firemen are taking a nap. Oh, wow. So midway into the game, uh, <laughs> at one point, I think the score was 13 to nothing or in favor of him. In favor of the uh, firemen. They were oh. winning. Uh, a spectator who was sitting close to me made the statement, it's obvious the policemen have had too many donuts and the firemen did get their nap. <laughs> so. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> oh. But it was a good game. I think everybody had a good time and good job. That's so, your report? That's my report. <laughs> wow. Okay. Commissioner Stecklin. All right. Um, since last report, the water department had one new service tap, five water leaks repaired, 14 services were updated, and the month of July, we had 367 Julie locations. Uh, new water sewer customers for the month of July, 95. So, again, we are outpacing where we have been in years past. So, that's a good sign. Um, upcoming events. Um, be sure to cheer on the Marion Wildcats football team as they play their first game against Heron this Saturday. The winner will have bragging rights to the Mayor's Cup, which is being reinstated here. So uh, the cup is sponsored by Swinford Media and Little Egypt Trophy. So way to go, Marion, and bring it home to Marion. Uh, okay, trivia. We do have some trivia tonight. So um, how many gallons of water does it take to, pro to process a pound of hamburger. I know it's a little off the wall, but you know what? That's what trivia is. So this would be like your meat packing plants to process hamburger. How, how many gallons of water is per pound? Do you have to drown the cow first? Well, mm, yes, probably. <laughs> Boy, these numbers. <laughs> One I have pound. no idea. Glenn, can you engineer on that a little? How many? 20 gallon and 3 ounces. 3 ounces. Boy, you're really cool. It takes four gallons of water per pound of hamburger. <laughs> so that's, that's one trivia. And the second trivia I have is what were the first water pipes made from in the United States? What material were they made from? Wood. Wood. Oh. Specifically what type of wood? <coughs> Cypress. I don't know that. Persimmon. <laughs> they were just, they were fire charred, bored out logs. <laughs> so they were charred to make them hardened. Hmm. I have a picture here if you care to look at one. So <laughs> thank you, parents, for that. We're, get, we're getting really... We're yeah, you guys are getting pretty obscure at this point. <laughs> we're taking this up a notch, so <laughs> that's all I have. So, again, <clears throat> support those Wildcats this Saturday. Go go Wildcats. Commissioner Webb. Uh, cemetery continued on the mowing and trimming. Uh, uh, grass is hanging with this year, so plenty to do. Uh, streets, uh, sidewalks, and drainage as usual. I'm uh, working on those issues. Uh, I will say the asphalt program, if, if all goes well and it doesn't rain much this week, uh, they're looking at possibly being being done with the asphalt by the end of the week. So if not, we'll probably carry over into next week. So that program's looking good throughout town. Uh, the streets I've driven looks really good. So appreciate the public's patience on that. So that's all I got. Okay, I have a short report from the Marion Carnegie Library Summer Reading Program um, with some pre- Impressive statistics, in my opinion. A lot of people talk about another gem of Marion is that library, and a lot of people do not realize just exactly what all goes on there. But they did have, on Memorial Day, kicked it off with 150 runners for their uh, 5K color run, Reading Colors Your World was the name of that. Summer reading continued throughout June and July with 551 individuals that registered, which included 400 children, 65 adults, and young adults, and 86 total adults. The total attendance at all the programs was 2,924, which I think is very impressive. Regular programs and activities continue, of course, to take place. There are always details available on the library's Facebook and Facebook page and website page. The library has resumed the popular Lawyer in the Library program. I think that's popular, Wendy? Lawyer in the Library? Okay. So that's where a licensed attorney is available on the first Tuesday of each month for free legal assistance. The, se the sessions are scheduled in 20-minute blocks, and registration is required. And gladly, another problem that has plagued that facility for quite some time, which is the uh, HVAC system, that project, the replacement of that, pro that system is nearing its completion. 
and uh, that's been a big project and I know that was one that we uh, were proud to get approved and going and hopefully the whole community will enjoy fully functioning and consistent heating and air conditioning in that facility for very many years to come so and get rid of our moisture problem that was a plague there so uh, with that is there anything else to come before the council I do have purpose for a short uh, executive session pertaining to property and personnel that I'd like to meet with you guys over but I do want to give one more shout out okay. I, just, I just remember that um, because I just saw it happen it popped up last night again the murals in the town uh, they threw one on us that we didn't know was happening last night on the back side of the Civic Center if you haven't seen it there's one back there now that wasn't there 48 hours ago so incredibly they did it in 48 hours so and there's I know three or four more that finished up this week they're just phenomenal so kudos to all those folks yeah I uh, I think that one that's going up at M is the last one of our project that we funded so now it's time to look forward to round two, maybe. Mm -hmm. We want to speed that up, given the popularity of them. Um, again, for those of you in the audience, we, when we go into executive session, we will be making no decisions, only discussion. And when we return out of executive session, we will not be making any decisions or any discussion, just simply adjourning the meeting. So what that means is, while you're welcome to stay in here, um, you'll be all by yourself. Um, but you're welcome to do that. So I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing property and personnel. So moved. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. If you guys will join me across the hall, we'll make discussion.